All right, so uh, where we left off was clinical nuclear medicine. I mean, again, in vivo means within the living body, um, which is what this is uh, concerning with. Um, for uh, the patient preparation is very minimal in uh, nuclear medicine. Uh, there's usually no special preparation that you would see with um, a lot of floral things. Um, patients usually can wear their own clothes. They don't need to change. Um, they do need to remove all the metal objects because that can cause artifacts and interfere with the images that are, are created. Um, and then after the completion of the study, the patients can usually um, resume all their normal activities. They don't need to do anything special or rest or anything like that. Um, a lot of things you see in nuclear medicine, in clinical nuclear medicine, um, bone scintigraphy, it's going to evaluate the patients uh, with malignancies, diffuse musculoskeletal abnormal lab results, hereditary me metabolic disorders. Um, you'll see nuclear cardiology, um, it's going to assess the cardiac, the heart performance, uh, evaluate myocardial perfusion, um, measure the viability and um, metabolism of your heart. Uh, you'll see central nervous system studies. They'll assess the effectiveness of surgery or radiation therapy, and they're going to evaluate uh, CNS diseases. You'll see um, studies in the endocrine system, uh, evaluate the thyroid gland, our treatment um, revolving around that. You'll see tumor imaging, uh, GI system evals and um, functions of the uh, GI organs, um, gastroenterology, nuclear medicine, it's evaluating the anatomy and function of the systems in uh, nephrology, urology, and kidney transplantation. You also see uh, in vitro and in vivo hematological studies. Um, imaging for infection, respiratory imaging, um, uh, something called sensual node. It maps uh, routes of lymphatic drainage and uh, permit, um, it permits more effective treatment for that. Um, you'll see therapeutic nuclear medicine and there will be special imaging procedures as well done in clinical nuclear medicine. Um, the principles of uh, uh, PET scans uh, uses positrons. They are positively charged electrons. Uh, they combine with negatively charged electron. Um, they combine with a negatively charged electron. Um, and they they will uh, combine and annihilate and um, transform into two equal energy photons. Um, they separate at 180 degrees of each other. Um, behave much like gamma rays. Clinical PET scans. Um, usually, um, it's unique in its ability to measure in vivo physiology. Um, because their results are very are, are quantitative, they're rapidly repeatable, and they're validated versus those of uh, those of accurate but much more invasive techniques. So <clears throat> they're very good to use, um, good for studies. So because everything's repeatable, the results are quantitative. Like I said, um, one downfall is that they're very costly. Um, that's about one of the, the hard the, the bad things about it right now is it's still very expensive to use. But again, the pe uh, patient preparation is minimal. Um, you just need to be free of metallic objects generally. Um, one of the main things done by PET scans is um, whole body tumor imaging and the studies. Uh, 80, 70 to 80 percent of PET scans are done to diagnose uh, stage and restage cancer. Cardiac positron emission tomo tomography offers higher diagnostic accuracy um, than conventional nuclear medicine techniques. Um, the future of nuclear medicine. Um, you see a radio immunotherapy to help um, help treat more diseases in the future. So um, it's a very growing, a big uh, growing field. Um, dual modality imaging uses spectrum PET with CT, likely to become one of the most one or more of the more useful diagnostic procedures for assessing treatment and evaluation of cancer. And then um, there'll be mobile PET units. Um, so they can travel to multiple hospitals and treat more patients. The radio pharmaceuticals, um, new ones are being created all the time. So and those are lower costs as well. That is the end of the presentation.